the news that the United Kingdom has declined to fully implement the SRVL system for its F-35B aircraft in the name of saving money may look like a curiosity at first glance, but in reality it reflects much deeper problems within the British carrier program. The Ministry of Defence proudly reporting savings of £309,000 comes at the cost of very real operational and combat limitations. In essence, the UK has deliberately reduced the capabilities of its own aircraft carriers and made F-35B operations less flexible and less effective than they could be. And when one remembers that each F-35B and its weapons cost tens of millions of pounds, abandoning a technology that expands mission capacity and improves flight safety looks like a questionable strategic decision. To understand the scale of the issue, it's important to look at SRVL, shipborne rolling vertical landing. This technique combines elements of vertical landing with a short rolling touchdown. Unlike the classic Stav landing, where the aircraft hovers above the deck and then descends vertically, SRVL allows a minimal forward movement, enabling the F-35B to land at a higher permissible mass, about three tons more. That is nearly half of the aircraft's maximum payload. In practical terms, it means that a jet can return with unused missiles, bombs, or additional fuel. In real combat operations, this is critical, since every AIM-120, every spear or paveway, and every remaining kilogram of fuel is money, logistics, and time that will be wasted if the pilot must dump it into the ocean before landing. And this is exactly the situation the UK is now entering. Relying solely on vertical landings, British F-35BS will have to get rid of excess weight before returning to HMS Queen Elizabeth because the ship simply does not have the Bedford lighting system needed for safe SRVL landings. Technically, SRVL remains possible, but without precise landing aid lighting, conducting it becomes risky, and any added risk for an aircraft that costs over £100 million is unacceptable. As a result, the supposed £309,000 savings may turn into losses measured in the millions through wasted munitions and reduced operational efficiency. The situation looks even stranger when compared to the UK's second carrier, HMS Prince of Wales. That ship does have the Bedford system installed, SRVL trials were conducted there, and the technology proved successful. This means the country now effectively operates two ships of the same class, one fully equipped and the other not. As a result, the air wing aboard Queen Elizabeth becomes less capable, less flexible, and more constrained than the one aboard Prince of Wales, even though both ships were supposed to provide the same operational potential. It is also important to remember that the F-35B concept already comes with many inherent limitations. Unlike the F-35C variant, designed for catapult-assisted takeoff and arrested recovery, the B model always suffered from shorter range, smaller payload, and mass constraints due to the lift fan. That is precisely why the UK originally treated SRVL as a core component of its carrier aviation concept, it helped offset the aircraft's trade-offs and allowed it to perform a wider spectrum of missions, from patrol flights to high-intensity strike operations. By declining to modernize HMS Queen Elizabeth, London has essentially fallen back toward a U.S. Marine Corps-style doctrine, where the F-35B is used primarily on smaller amphibious assault ships, not on full-sized carriers. In the long run, this decision may weaken Britain's entire carrier-based deterrence model. The ability to recover an aircraft with its payload intact is not simply an economic question. It is a matter of readiness and operational continuity. In a high-tempo conflict, for example, in the North Atlantic or the Mediterranean, losing even several minutes due to dumping munitions before landing can become critical. Worse yet, air crews will face the dilemma of choosing between safety and preserving expensive weapons, a scenario that inevitably leads to errors and incidents. The issue is not that SRVL is inherently hard or dangerous. The real issue is that the UK has allowed a situation in which only half of its carrier fleet is equipped with modern landing aid systems. This piles on top of existing limitations such as the limited number of available aircraft, the incomplete set of strike weapons for the F-35B, 
the absence of long-range air-to-air missiles, and growing concerns about the overall coherence of Britain's carrier strategy. The decision to save £309,000 has created a strategic imbalance already criticized by analysts and national media alike. And this is one of those cases where saving a small amount today almost certainly guarantees much greater losses tomorrow.